Hello YouTube and welcome back to a new Unity 3D tutorial. So last tutorial we made it, so when we walk up to this character here and press a Q, it'll open up a little shop window where we can basically browse the items. Now this isn't fully complete, which I hope you didn't assume, but what we're going to do today is make it so when you click on the apple, it gets the apple's ID, gets the price of it and minuses it away from your money and if you've got enough it gives it your own, adds it to your inventory, thus making you purchase something. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at our entity script and our grids here. So currently we only have two grids which is okay for now and um, we can eventually make it better but in the tooltip just like our inventory we're going to put the IDs of each number. You can do this scriptally if you want but simply because there's only been one of this person you don't really need to do it so in the actual inventory inspector I mean I'm just gonna go for tooltip is 4 because the apple starts with 4 and the oak wood starts with 0 so we have the tooltips as the IDs which is perfect it's just what we need so if we open up our female text shop script here if we find um, the window bit I'm just gonna quickly move it out the way or to the side a little so we can see what we're looking at by setting it to 200-200 and then just quickly change it in the inspector because it doesn't update. Perfect. Now, if we play it, we should be able to see what money we have instead of it being blinded by something. So if we go here and go select, that's where it is. So we can see what we have now. So when we click the apple, the first thing we need to do is detect that something's being clicked. So, th so the best way to do this is in your function update here, we're going to type if grid value does not equal minus one because it starts at minus one so that means something's being clicked then what we can do is show a new item well we need a new button first really hmm. yeah we need a new button because that would be better so we'll put it at the bottom of this scroll grid here so if it does not equal minus one it means something's clicked then we need it to show a button that says basically do you want to buy this item kind of thing so GUI button so we copy this paste it here so if GUI button and then we can edit this right now so we'll go up here duplicate close button so we need it to be 35 by we'll say 60 so it's slightly longer 30 and 60 and we'll call this buy button so we don't need it there we need it roughly about in fact we do need it there because it's going to be in line we can bring it down to say what's the size of our window 360 so we'll say 350 so buy button we'll scroll down and every time it says close button on our buy we'll just change it to buy and instead of using an icon, we'll type purchase. That's spot wrong, I'll just type buy then. Seems easier. So now, every time we click um, a button, it'll show this button here saying, Do you want to buy something? So if we show the app, click the apple, it'll show this button, Do you want to buy it? And then in here, we type what we need. So if, and now we need to find out how much player, the mon player's money, how much the player has how much money the player has got it so if we look here you have players inventory players money dot two string so if we copy this line and paste it here so here players money player inventory dot players money is equal to or more than other way so basically this means is if it e say the apple costs 10 which we're about to put here um, if the I if players dot players money equals 10 or is more than 10 because you don't want it less than because then the player could buy it if they've got one coin which is not what we need so now we need to get the price of the actual item so this is the best way to do is if you go to player inventory which is if we look at in here we have the item IDs and stuff so we need the item buying amount so player inventory dot item buying amount and since it's an array we need to open it up so if the player's money is less 
well, we'll just say if the player's money is more than buying amount. So what buying amount do we specify? Well, we could type grids dot. In fact, grids bracket. Sorry, grid value. Yes, we have bracket within brackets. It's okay. Dot tooltip and then bracket. It might require us to convert it. So here we now have a script that says if the player's money is more than and the item buying amount. So we go to player's inventory here and grids dot grid value. In fact, we don't even need grids. Yeah, we do. We do need grids. I apologise. So grids dot grid value. So say we select grid zero which is the apple so it gets the zero of grids which is apple then gets its tooltip so if it's more than that it'll work so in here we'll just write a little script saying print you buy yeah i know it's wrong and probably spelled wrong but it's just as a test so if we click it it might require us to convert it to an integer Str cannot convert a string to imperfect so here we'll type uh, so we'll type here then because it's trying to convert convert the tooltip to an integer which can't happen we're going to copy the grids dot, grid value dot tooltip and above this we're going to type var um, item underscore id you don't have to name it that but I'm going to and it'll be an int make sure you put colon int so it knows where it is equals grids dot grid value tooltip but before this we'll type parse int bracket and put our thing in so that'll convert it to an integer so w whatever we take this ID we've got the ID of it and then we'll put this into the buying amount so when it runs it is the player's money more than item buying amount 0 which is 10 the player's more than 10 it prints you buy hopefully let's see it likes it so let's play so oh, full screen let's run over and we'll tick U and click Q. Our button's this bit, that's why it's there. Click U buy, perfect. So that works, we need to move our button up because that was awful. So let's move our button up a little bit. So instead of 350, we'll say 300 so we can see it. And we'll say 70 for the height, but 20 for the. Oh, that's why it's backwards. 20 for the width. 70 for the width, 20 for the height. That's it, I apologise. So we'll go back to our um, thing here and we'll just resize it a little bit quickly. Buy button should be. Y should be 300, width should be 70, height should be 20. So now we have a proper button. So now that works, it takes it away. We just need to make it minus our character player's money. So we'll type player.inventory.money, copy that, minus equals, and then player.itemid. Just like that. Simple as that. So now it'll minus it and take it away, and it should automatically refresh it and show us up top. So let's go and check and see if our buy button works. So we go up and slightly lagging here. Press Q and we get it. We press the button and we get the buy button. Click it and click it in the right place and it loads. So it's believing that we're clicking on the grids even though we're not. So we need to shrink the grids down because as you can see we don't click here, it doesn't do anything. So the best way would be to move the scroll bar across. In fact, I'm going to get abolish the scroll bar full stop because we don't need it. So I'm going to get grab the scroll bars here and just delete and grab the end scroll view, delete. And instead of three, five, I'm going to make it three. And I'm going to come up here and remove the scroll bar. Boom. But the grids buttons, I'm going to resize a little bit so you can actually see it. So if we play it again, see if it works a little slightly better. So we go over and we click her Q. So we have a weird scroll bar, but we need to resize the grid so it'll work fine. Click that and click buy. Perfect. Now it's working fully. So we can spend our money, but if we run out of money, oh no, it won't let us buy no more. If we click this one, 
buy it, buy it, and we have no more gold left. Oh no. But, just as a test, we kill her, well, I'm not going to do that. I was going to kill someone and do it, but we know it will work. So, let's add some more grids to it. So, we'll, from here, we'll just say 8. So, we now we have 8 items. And we'll just close some of these, because it will be awkward otherwise. There, so now we can try again. We should see line up nicely, and we can just tweak what the actual grid size buttons are. So, in that case, we can see what we're doing. So, as you can see, it's filled up, but if we start playing with the heights of it, it should go away. So, click that, and we can go grid buttons, and we'll just resize the width to say I don't want them hugely big. What about 169, and then we'll resize this to about. There, that'll do, and then we can just bring it down there. Perfect, that's much better. And we'll also move the buy button across slightly because we don't know where it needs to go. Yeah, that'll do. Move it, yeah, that'll do. So I'll just even all these out. I'm going to even all these out so they're like not 0 0.5, 0 0.3, it'll be 68 and stuff. I'll speed it up and I'll implement it back into our script and I'll be back in a minute. more appealing shop just a little bit so we can click things and we can buy them no in problems but we can buy all the same things so all what's left now is when we buy it it's not in our inventory we need to make it go in our inventory so we already have the script for this all we need to do is tweak the right things and then we've got it perfect so what I'm gonna do is look for our player and we're gonna find the collection script and we're going to read a little bit of it. So when we collect oak wood here, it sets the player's amount to that for... Oh, it basically adds one to our player's amount of this item because it's grid numbered yet. I haven't done this in a while. And then it sets the ID to wherever it is. So we can do that, right? So we copy these here. Copy them and we go back to our, our female text shop and where it says print you buy, get rid of that and just paste this line in, these lines. If you didn't do this, um, this isn't going to work for you because you really need that add that item in order for it to work. So go back and find the inventory window, it should be named, but yeah, so we're going to get this and instead of seeing that one, we're going to put what it actually is. So if we find here, we can put oak wood palmer blah blah blah. We can set the ID to item ID. Boom. So that's what item ID is going to be set to, and it'll plus it as one. And then inventory added will set this to item ID again. So for what value it is. So that in play inventory item players amount item ID. So the item ID is apple. Say so we go to our players inventory. Item amount, where are you? Players amount, so it'll plus one, and then it'll run this code which we know fully works. Change the ID to my ID and make it buy and add to our inventory. Fingers crossed, I really, really hope this works. So we put our inventory on so we can see. We'll drag this here and we'll go up to you, click Q. We want to buy an apple, please. There you go, perfect. We'll buy another one and another one click the wood oh look at that we've got another one and it'll keep adding it because it's the same thing thank you very much and our money's going down so let's go over here and collect some wood or stone will it continue to add it on just checking for any glitches look at that perfect so we now have a fully working shop so you can buy things all we need to do is make it so you can sell things so the shop's not the easiest thing to do but I'm trying to keep the tutorial short so next time we're going to improve our GUI a bit more then time after that we're going to make it so you can sell um, the selling is really really easy all you do is reverse a little bit this so instead of minusing your plus and instead of plusing your minus 
stuff like that it's really really easy so thank you for watching i hope you liked it please join the facebook group so you can comment straight to me and any problems and message you back and see you next time